I think that the, the mitigation adaptation synergies discussion is a, is a really important one. Again, in the negotiations, it's linked to the markets and non-markets discussion, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. If we're talking about scientific research, I think that there can be some really quality scientific research that builds on the research that's already there that can take that important discussion further. I think that it's problematic that mitigation and adaptation are continuously looked at through separate silos. They're not separate. Um, someone said the other day, which I agree with, that mitigation is adaptation. I mean, why, why would we need to mitigate <laughs> if, we didn't, if we weren't adapting to something, um, which is climate change? So, um, so, there's the, so, so that, 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 that's something that I would, that I would emphasise as being um, a really important and, and valuable area of, of research that I think an organisation like C4 can be contributing to, to, to the policy dialogue, both at an international um, and, and at a national level. Um, and from looking at the research myself, I do see a lot of case studies undertaken at the national level um, that can then also inform the, the international policy dialogue. Mitigation and adaptation have um, traditionally been approached within the international policy space um, in, 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 in separate contexts. And so a good example of that is the Green Climate Fund, for example, has um, separate windows. It has a, a mitigation window and an adaptation window. There's been um, a lot of emerging science over recent years which identifies the synergies that exist between mitigation and adaptation. Um, and in reality, a lot of projects on the ground that are predominantly mitigation projects do have adaptation outcomes. Um, adaptation projects have mitigation outcomes. Um, and there are also trade-offs that exist in the context of, of, of mitigation and adaptation synergies. And so um, there's been a lot of science that's come through on that over, over, over recent years. Now, an interesting discussion that's emerged recently within the UNFCCC is um, a discussion concerning an alternative approach to um, sustainable management of forests. And so this is considered by some to be an alternative to Red Plus. Um, considered by some to be some, uh, an approach to the forest sector that can be broader than Red Plus, um, and it looks specifically at mitigation and adaptation. And this was a proposal that was put forward by Bolivia back in 2012. So it's moved through the negotiations to a point where there is very much um, more emphasis being placed on on mitigation and adaptation synergistically. That's flowed through to discussions within other components of the of the international policy discourse, one of which is finance. Um, and so you can see within the results areas of the Green Climate Fund, for example, that there are um, adaptation areas that are linked to mitigation. So there's going to be, there's going to be some consideration of, 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 of some additional adaptation results areas that are specifically linked to, to mitigation. Um, this has also flowed through to the Standing Committee on Finance in terms of their discussions um, because, uh, because finance in the forest sector is, is relevant in both a mitigation and an adaptation context. So it's an emerging discussion that's, um, that's not yet reached any, um, any policy resolution within, within the UNFCCC at this stage. Um, some have called for additional scientific um, expert advice um, on the issue. Um, a lot of countries are a bit unsure as to what to do with the topic. So it's, uh, it's, 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 an interesting, it's an interesting topic. The Standing Committee, um, as a part of the, uh, the, the, the Warsaw decision concerning Red Plus, um, was provided with a, a mandate to look at the coordination and cohesion of finance concerning forests. So during 2014, the Standing Committee has been looking at what that means um, and what to do in terms of um, closely analysing the issue of finance for forests. And so we're not just talking about finance for Red Plus, we're talking about mitigation and adaptation climate finance in, in a forest context. 
And so during 2015, it looks highly likely that the Standing Committee will be um, placing quite a significant amount of emphasis on adaptation and mitigation, markets and non-markets finance in the context of the forest sector.